Wife accuses husband of cheating, but he has a surprise for her. So, the previous blogs I've written and shared here were written because a buddy, an actor, requested me to assist him in putting together a play with scenes that illustrate couple relationships. That's why I started coming here to read tales. But, the fact is, I prefer to learn these tales by seeing people in the eyes because it gives me a greater sense of the emotions that are underlying the stories, which is the major reason of performing the play. So I told my friends, and he told his friends, and some individuals agreed to tell their tales. So I've seen a lot of grief in people's eyes when they speak about their experiences. But nothing could have prepared me for what I heard the day before. As a result, this comes from a person acquainted to the actor's acquaintance. We spoke about what's going on in his life a couple times, and it's a narrative that's been going on for nine or ten years. But yesterday, he phoned and said. He wanted to chat to me about certain developments, so we went out for coffee after supper. After some small chat, I asked him what was wrong, and he just gave me his mobile phone and showed me a tape of a conversation he had with his wife a few days prior. I'm not going to give a history, since it's all in his own words during the talk, and it's all below. So F is the friend, and FW is the friend's wife. F, for the record, you just entered our house's office and asked me whether I'm having an affair, and I requested you to videotape our discussion before responding. Is this right? FW, yes, it is. So, are you going to respond to me? Angry, nearly yelling voice. Yes, FFW, are you going to respond to me? F, I am, in fact, having an affair. FW, how long has this been happening? F, are you referring to the lady I've been seeing? Approximately two years, FW, yelling, two years. You've been unfaithful for the last two years. F, no, I've been unfaithful for the last six years. More. Specifically, since April 6, 2015. It was indeed my birthday. I hired a call lady and stayed at a hotel for a few hours. FW, you know what I mean. You're a jerk. Why would you do anything like this to me? F, are you sure you want to have this conversation? Do you truly want to know why? I'll explain why. You began acting strangely nine years ago, and I just couldn't figure out why. There was nothing fundamentally different between us, and yet everything shifted all of a sudden. I had to walk on eggshells around you because it felt like the fact that I breathed bothered you. And I spent some time lost, wondering why, and doing my best, but things simply seemed to grow worse all the time. And then our nearly non-existent good time came to an end. Then, when I was washing the vehicle, I discovered a fragment of a condom wrapper, and the cause became evident. She mumbles and tries to say something, but he stops her. F. If you want to know why, simply let me finish, and then you may say anything you want. So at that moment, I felt anguish like I'd never felt before, emasculated and low. I had the feeling there was something wrong with me. I wanted to harm you, I wanted to hurt myself, but then I remembered the kids and how much I love you. I resolved to win you back, but everything I did seemed to irritate you. I brought you to beautiful restaurants, on romantic dates, and on vacation to locations you always claimed you wanted to see but you were never there. You were engrossed on your phone, and I was utterly unobtrusive. You excused yourself with work functions and over time, and I picked up the home and the kids. You did nothing but work, and your mobile phone was your world while you were at home. But I didn't give up. She can be heard weeping in the background. Since then, we've had some type of half-baked pity on two occasions, April 6, 2013 and 2014. On your birthday in 2014, I went crazy. Planning the ideal evening for us as a family, only for you. To flake out at the last minute, stating you were detained at work and would be late. Can you image the expressions on our daughter's faces when you did this? Of course you can, but you've never bothered. They have been heartbroken. For me this was the beginning of the end. I was planning on divorcing you and destroying your and your lover's lives. I hired a private investigator, and he uncovered all the evidence I needed, including all of your dirty escapes. I found out where the man lived and where his wife was. You know what I did? I followed them. And guess what? You have no idea how kind your sweetheart is to his wife. Perhaps he is overcompensating as a result of his guilt. And then I saw his children, and I couldn't bring myself to end their marriage. So I spoke to attorneys about initiating the divorce proceedings, but then I realized how this would affect us financially, as well as our life and the lives of our children. But believe me, if I could have gotten away with murder, at the time, I would have strangled you with my own hands. Then my 2015 birthday came, and there was no half-baked pity, no kiss, no card. You entirely forgot about it. FW, 
crying and yelling. Well, you didn't do anything for my birthdays either. F. True, but I did not forget about them. I didn't give a damn about them on purpose. But in your instance, I suppose you forgot because I was so irrelevant to you. And if you didn't, we're in the same boat, aren't we? She simply, F. So, that night, I hired an escort and beat her up at the same hotel where you were staying with your partner. And then I realized that the kids were the most essential thing, that not messing them up with all of this was critical, since they were already suffering from the disregard you were displaying to them. FW, ignorance, what are you on about? F, do you want to know how they're feeling? Proceed with caution. Go chat to them and ask them questions, I challenge you. Silence, F, so, if you recall, that's when we really had some blowouts. But, you see, I knew your sweetheart would never leave his family, so I knew you wouldn't either until I did something. And if you did, well, I had nothing to lose, and, in the end, we'd make it. That's when I stopped doing everything and began, calling you out when you were in a foul mood because your clothing hadn't been cleaned or pressed, and I began telling you to do it yourself. FW, so you've chosen to go behind my back? No, 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 you are entirely incorrect. I never did anything behind your back. I never told you, but I never concealed it either. There was nothing to speak about at first. After three years in a lifeless bedroom, I had lost faith that any lady would even glance at me. But I began to regain some self-esteem, began working out more, quit drinking and smoking, began eating better, and began living for the ladies. And guess what? Can you image how many divorced soccer mothers there are in the world? After all, it seemed that I wasn't all that horrible. It seemed that the issue wasn't with me, but with you. Then I met my present girlfriend two years ago. The kids know her, and she's been to family gatherings when you didn't want to attend. From my side of the family, I'd never taken her to your parents, even though they're aware. F.W. Are my parents aware? F. Without a doubt, I informed them. I didn't want rumors to spread or misunderstandings to occur. I wanted them to know what was going on in our life and the lives of their grandchildren. I begged everyone to keep it a secret because I didn't want to disturb our lives. I didn't want the drama and our marriage was only a piece of paper. F.W. Isn't everyone aware of all of this? F. Just the children and our close family. That's why I never went back to your parents' place and stopped inviting you to mine. But, in retrospect, I never kept anything from you. I left Facebook Messenger open. My mail is logged in on our home computer, and my phone has no password. You just didn't care, just as I didn't feel required to inform you and I didn't care when I fell out of love with you. After all, we didn't even communicate. We went weeks without speaking to one another. We become nothing more than two strangers living under the same house, and that is all we are. She simply, F, but I knew this was going to happen. To be honest, I had no idea it would start with you accusing me of cheating. Even you, I believe, can see the hypocrisy. Remember all the phones I've given you for your birthdays throughout the years. Do you believe I did it because I love you? Nah. They were all infected with malware. I've been following your dialogue for at least five years, so I know where you've been, when, I can even tell you how many times you have in the backseat of your vehicle or his. Then, abruptly, all contact ceased two months ago, and I observed how miserable you were around the home since your job. Suddenly didn't require you as much as it used to, wonder why. Then I conducted some research and discovered his accident, how he is paraplegic and being cared for by the woman he never intended to leave how he can't even raise his arms to write you a goodbye text, and I watched how lovely you began to be to our daughters and to me, despite your depression. I had a feeling something was going to happen. So here's how it's going to work. If you wish to get a divorce, I've got nine years of adultery evidence, and I'm going to take you to the cleaners. If you wish to leave the home but not get divorced, you may, but it is entirely your financial responsibility. I would encourage you to retain things as they are for the time being at least until our youngest goes off to college in a few years. You can find another lover or have H-ups as long as you are discreet. I realize it will be different now that you are almost 50, and you can always find someone to bone you, but I doubt. You'll find someone who wants anything more important. As for me, life will continue as it has for the last nine years. There was more in the tape, but this was the most crucial section, in my opinion. I asked him if I could transcribe it and publish it here, and he accepted so he is aware that this has been uploaded. I'm not sure whether he's a Reddit member. How do you feel about his life during the previous nine, nearly ten, years, 
Since usual, I apologize for any grammatical or spelling issues, as I am not a native English speaker. Edit. It has just come to my knowledge that someone has developed a YouTube video based on this tale. I would appreciate it if the individual who created the video would remove it, since this is copyrighted material for the play. It would have been different if he had approached me about filming a video using what I wrote, but no one contacted me. So remove it or, at the very least, contact me. I posted this tale here for free so that many of you who come here with issues have something to think about, just as I did with the previous stories, and not so that someone may earn from the YouTube views. Thank you very much, small update. So I eventually ran into the man again. We met when grocery shopping at a mall near my house, and we went to have some coffee. I didn't want to simply inquire how things were doing, but he got to the business and gave me an update on his condition. So, after that conversation, she spent the next three days imprisoned in a guest room. She was a horrible wreck when she eventually came out. She asked my buddy if they could chat, and he agreed. They sat in the living room, and she began by apologizing for the whole situation. Only after he said everything did she realize what she had done to her family, how much she hates it, and how much she wants to be a family again. He listened to her and then said she was sorry because it was over. She was sorry because she now had no one, that the way things are not, are just a result of the choices she made, that they are no longer a family, that ship has sailed, and that he did not see her as his wife in any way, shape, or form. Then he inquired what she wanted to do. He claims she simply stayed there silently sobbing for a long time before accepting the situation and said she wasn't going anywhere. He told her it was great, but she should seek treatment to help her deal with everything. She proposed couples counseling, and he just informed her they were no longer a relationship. There are just two individuals living under the same roof. The only difference was that they might be cordial and even rekindle their relationship, making living in the home a little more pleasant or not. But it was a decision he didn't have to make. Her choices would decide how things turned out. He told her once again that she was free to find someone else as long as she was discreet about it, and that was the end of it. He claims that she has been the ideal roommate since the conversation. That's all there is to it. Thank you for taking the time to read my story.